Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes as we're reading Scripture and we come across those lists of names, we're tempted to just kind of skip by them. Especially the ones that are really hard to pronounce. Yeah, you've done that, haven't you? So have I. Hard to pronounce, or we're like, who in the world are these people? Especially when we get the long list in the genealogy, and it's name after name after name. Or the end of one of Paul's letters, like our reading for today, which is a a list of names, people giving greetings, some instructions that are being given, given, and they really don't even apply to us today, so we may just kind of skip by. Or maybe they do apply to us today. And maybe those are names that are important. They were certainly important to the Apostle Paul. They were certainly important to the people of Colossa. They were certainly important to the mission and the ministry of the church. These were real people. And real situations that were going on. Real ministry. And, and, and they were part of the, the people that, that Paul depended on for the furthering of the kingdom. As Pastor Mike has mentioned in the announcements and in prayer today, you know, we're, we're recognizing the ascension of our Savior Jesus Christ. That Jesus, after he had completed his work of salvation, after he had spent time teaching and training and leading his disciples, after he had given his life on the cross, paid the price for all sin, rose victoriously from the dead as we've been celebrating throughout this Easter season, the victory that is ours because of Jesus Christ. And then he showed himself, the resurrected Lord, to over 500 people during a period of 40 days after the resurrection. Then he removed his visible presence in order to be Lord of all, Lord of the church, and he is over all. And before he ascended, he instructed his disciples of all time to go and make disciples. And to do that through, through baptizing and teaching. Proclaiming the truth of all that God has done through Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what Paul was doing. And his fellow servants. They were baptizing and teaching. They were proclaiming and encouraging And so Paul writes this letter to the Colossians, and as he brings this letter to to a conclusion, it's ready to go to the people of Colossa. A letter to encourage them, a letter to um, uh, encourage them in their walk with the Lord and to live as Christ with one another and in the community. Paul sends this letter with two people, Tychicus and Onesimus. And the instructions are given of of why he's sending it with them, but also what they are to do. And they are to share with the people of Colossa what's been going on. What's been happening in the ministry. What Paul and the others have been doing. What God has been doing. And how the church is is growing. The body of Christ is, is growing. Because he didn't include all of those things in the letter. Paul himself would have wanted to go, but he was in prison. So he sends these two people, trusted by him, as they deliver the message, and as they deliver encouragement, strength, and share what Paul is doing in in the ministry that's happening. The next section we get to, we actually hear names we know, like Mark and and Barnabas and and Luke, and there are others, and and Paul is talking about 
uh, they send their greetings. Now, this is more than simply saying, hello, just wanted to say hi. You know, sometimes we, we do that. We're talking with someone, and then as we, we, we part from them, they say, hey, tell your spouse they said hi. Yeah, we do that. But this is more than saying hi. It's this acknowledgement that they are brothers and sisters in Christ. It's this acknowledgement that they are part of the body of Christ and the importance of the ministry that's happening. They are connected to one another, baptized into the body of Christ, working together to share the love of Christ with others. That they are dependent upon each other. They are praying for one another. They are uplifting one another in, in prayer for the sake of the mission. So we come to the conclusion of the letter. There's another person who's, who's mentioned. Archippus. We don't know much about Archippus, but Paul says to the Colossians that they make sure they remind him of the ministry that the Lord has called him to do. Make sure that he carries out something specific of what he's supposed to do. And we have no idea what that was. Paul knew what it was. Archippus knew what it was. And maybe even the people of Colossae knew what it was. But we don't know what it was. And, and, and what was the message behind it as Paul is saying this? Is it a, is it a, a gentle reminder? Is it a strong encouragement? We just don't know. But it was important, and the people of that time knew and understood what it was all about. Again, in this conclusion of Paul's letter, it was about real people, real situations, real ministry. People that God had put together to carry out his work People who depended on each other, who encouraged one another, who prayed for one another, who loved each other in Christian love. God created us for relationship. A relationship with him which was broken by sin, but Christ our Savior came to redeem us, to make it possible for us to have a relationship with our God, to know His love, to know His forgiveness, to live in His grace, and then to have relationship with one another and be a part of the body of Christ and serve in the body of Christ for the continuing mission of making disciples, of bringing to people the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you were to write a letter about your church life, about your being part of the body of Christ, whose names would you include in that letter? Or maybe I should say, if you were to do a Facebook post about your life in Christ, who would you tag? real people regarding real situations about real ministry. God has blessed us as, as his church and he blesses us and he calls us together and he equips us and does everything for us as he works through us to continue to carry out his mission until our Savior returns. And how important it is for us to be connected with one another. That's been tough this past year. It's been tough. Still is. You know, with COVID and all the things and not being able to gather in person. And we've been so thankful for all the, the technology 
to gather, to, you know, to still be to gathered even though we were scattered. And so thankful for all of that and to do all of that, but it's still not the same as coming together and being in person because we can, we can worship together, but I'll tell you what, a lot that happens and goes on is after our worship service ends. People standing around talking with each other here inside the sanctuary and outside on the patio. Talking about what's going on. Real situations. Talking about life. Talking about things that need to be prayed about. The hugs that happen. The hand on a shoulder. Encouraging. Supporting. Loving. And how important it is being connected in any way that we can. In this past year, we've been trying to figure out any way we can to stay connected because it's important. Because the more connected we are as the body of Christ, the more opportunity there is for us to serve. And the more opportunity there is for us to be served. Working together, the body of Christ, on the mission of Christ, being Christ to one another. Today in our worship service, we're recognizing and celebrating two very significant things about real people, real situations, real ministry. Um, celebrating and recognizing Janice King, our preschool director and uh, director of children's ministry as well, um, for not just the work that she has done here and, and within our district and synod, but celebrating the connections. Yeah, how many people are on your list of all the people that you've been connected with as you have helped and encouraged or been encouraged and helped in children's education. Not just here at St. John's, but around our district and around the Synod as well. Connected. And so we celebrate. We give thanks to God today. We praise God for all of those connections and, and for how God has used you over these years. Uh, in all of these connections. The other thing that we're celebrating today and recognizing is the commissioning of seven new Stephen ministers to join our current five Stephen ministers. We're celebrating because this ministry is doubling today. They have gone through 50 hours of training, Stephen ministry training, and what's Stephen ministry? Stephen ministry is people who have been trained to walk alongside someone in a very confidential, caring relationship when people are going through various challenges in their life, when they're struggling with things because of the brokenness of the world that we live in. And they're people who care and listen and pray and support and encourage people that God uses to be the hands, the feet, the voice, the care of Christ walking alongside someone in their challenging times. And if you're going through challenging times and you think, ah, I could use that right now, let me know. Let Penny Kremen know one of our Stephen leaders. Let Pam Barker know, one of our Stephen leaders. Let Pastor Mike know. We'll get you connected to a Stephen minister, a confidential ministry. Real people, real situations, real ministry. And I could go on and on and on. Well, another big thing that's happening today is seven of members of our Comfort Dog team are on their way to Chicago right now. 
in order to go through more training, additional people being trained, in order to come back with a second comfort dog. That's happening this week. God at work in mission and in ministry. God at work. So as we come to those list of names in Paul's letter, let it be a reminder to us of the list of names in our lives. The people in our lives. The people that God is using to minister to us. The people that God is using for us to minister to them. The people that God is using to work together with to minister to others. To proclaim this incredible, beautiful message that we have. God so loved the world. Jesus Christ, crucified, raised from the dead, the ascended Lord, Lord of the church, who walks with us every step of the way, real people in real situations, doing real ministry. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for relationships, our relationship with you that is possible because of the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the people that you put in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for fellow servants in Christ. Bless us in our work together. Bless us in our growing in your grace and your love. Bless us in our support and our encouragement and strengthening one another. And bless us, Lord, in the carrying out of the mission. The mission of proclaiming the good news, your love for the whole world. Grow us, strengthen us, bless us in Jesus Christ. Amen.